Hey, you guys, welcome back to A Touch by Candy, A Candy's Touch. Happy Friday. Y'all know this evening with sunset is the beginning of the Sabbath until tomorrow to sunset. So keep this day holy, you guys. Remember, God said you keep this day holy. He will bless you and not speak in your own ways and do your own things. And he will bless you and bless your bloodline. So let's try to be obedient. Make this time, family time, quiet time and holiness there's holy movies there's holy songs so it's not hard anyway so you guys know I'm on this platform to um, be a liaison between the world and the church for those whose church hurt and broken just to help uh, minish testify on the goodness of God and my experience other experience um, to stay strong and so we can get everyone back in church to that one body that God's coming back for. God's coming back for the church, not churches. So we need to get together and be as one, you guys. Anyways, so I've been trying to get this out for the last several weeks. It's been a struggle. I've been going through a little warfare with this. I'm not going to lie. Don't think that anyone that's trying to deliver God's message to more than one person is not going to get attacked. They are like an attraction for the enemy. The devil is really angry. So keep people in prayer, you guys, and y'all see them trying to um, speak about the, the love of Christ and the goodness of Christ on certain platforms because you already know what it is out here. Um, it's warfare. So this month, I wanted to share what this month was really about behind the um, scarecrows, behind the pumpkins, behind the candy, what's really going on. When we watch these movies, when we expose our ears and our eyes to certain things from the demonic world, what's really going on? So you guys pass this, share, like, subscribe, pass this to as many people as you can for awareness, not for fame, not for fortune, but for awareness. I'm at my internship. It's Friday. It's casual day. Um, so, you know, I do counseling with the youth and you best believe I got my Bible. And my devotion for the babies. Okay. So, anyways, so remember, you guys, if you need spiritual counseling, make sure they're biblical and Bible based because a lot of these counselors and psychologists and therapists, they are messing with other stuff chakras, stones, jewels, witchcraft stuff. So, make sure they believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They, they just because they're spiritual based, that don't mean they're going to be busting you with the Bible. And if they don't fit you, find one that fits you. Just because one goes bad on the, the whole apples or trees are bad, okay? Anyways, sorry for rushing. I'm at my internship, but I really want to get this video out. I'm going to make sure the last one from last year that I sent for Halloween, I'm going to send that back out because that's a testimony from a warlock mm -hmm. and a young girl who body um, was part of a cult sacrifice. This stuff goes on. This stuff is real. Let's not be naive and let's not... Oh, don't play anything. It's just for the kids. Oh, it's this. No. Okay, so let me send this out. You guys, please like, share, subscribe. Get this out to people. That's all we can do. All right, love you guys. Take care. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. The meat of this interview, you were very heavily involved in witchcraft at one point in your life just really quickly for people who don't know your testimony who don't know your story how did you get involved in witchcraft yeah around the age of 13 i was uh started to get depressed i was being bullied at school and even though i was in a christian home um my parents did the best that they could but they were heavily on the side of just abuse and so when you were in trouble you were you were beat. And so I believe the enemy used that to come against my self-worth, who I thought I was. And I was so depressed. I just thought if I would die, life would be better for everybody else. And so during that time, I was connected with some girls. And I remember going to a sleepover and they watched a movie called The Craft. And this movie came out uh, around 1996 and it was about four witches who were in high school and these witches were bullied and picked on and their lives were kind of messed up and they used witchcraft to control situations around them and to get what they wanted. I watched the movie and I thought I want that. Well, of course in the movie they went too far anyway 
and the witchcraft had turned against them and the girls were desperate to get out of it. But during that point, I didn't even see that ending. I just thought, oh, I won't go that far. I'm just going to be innocent in it. And I began to study the religion of Wiccan and study um, different spells and incantations and new age practices and occult practices that I was doing in a Christian home that nobody knew I was doing. And so what started off as something innocent where I'm just connecting with energy and the universe and vibes and all these innocent things that we see took me down a path of just dark desperation. Um, I, I felt at one point that I was living in like a haunted house because I was hearing scratches on the wall right next to me. I would feel brushed by me and be terrified that somebody is here in the room with me. Someone's watching me. I've always felt like I was being watched. When I would wash my face for the day, it was one of the most terrifying things that I did. When I took a shower and I had to close my eyes, I was so terrified. If I had to get up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water, I would run because I thought something's gonna grab my feet. I was an adult wow. at this point. And it took me far into drugs. Um, I ended up being homeless and on drugs in and out of jails and all kinds of things. For nine years of my life, I was really in a dark place. Okay, today is June 1st. You can say your name and spell it. I'm God, G-O-D. And one day God did set you free, Jenny. And we're yeah. so, so grateful that you've renounced that and you are a minister of the gospel, an awesome worship leader. I love your testimony. And 700 Club is, has covers your story quite yes. a bit. And so we're so grateful for that. But you know, Jenny, it's so troubling to see that witchcraft and the occult uh, is really on the rise I and mean, we're seeing it in the stores we're seeing clothing promoting hey i'm a good witch or i'm a bad witch you know right um uh, we're seeing uh even witches having workshops and retreats and all these things why do you think this has become so much more mainstream so much more acceptable i think media has done a a, a good job of pushing something to the point where it is now normalized when back in the day something like that for you and i it would be shocking to see and now because we have shows as early as you know daycare age promoting witchcraft and sorcery and it's okay boys and girls say these spell words with us and it's so ABC preschool witchcraft that it gets into the hearts and the minds of people, including the people in church and people who are, are not really connected with the Lord and don't understand, they're easily deceived. And the Bible talks about even the very elect will be deceived. And so people are going to a whole nother source. That's what they're, they're wanting. They want a healing crystal. Because mm. they don't understand that Jesus is the healer. And there's no other source that you can go to except through Jesus. And so by I'm seeing a rise of this. I'm seeing it become very trending on TikTok and things like that. And there's a whole generation of people who I feel like are being rocked to sleep by the enemy. And it's just really time for the church, like what you're doing during this interview, to sound the alarm and Absolutely. say, no, we need to wake up and we need to say, this is not right. And it's not for my home. It's not for my kids. And, you know, it's, I believe that a lot of young girls are being targeted because there's this one, apparently she's an influencer on Instagram. Her name is, I think, Brie Luna or something like that. And she yeah. partnered with Smashbox, the cosmetic yes. company, and they created a whole cosmetic line using, I think, inspired by crystals. Right. Yeah. They're really... pushing the envelope. They want to yeah. see everything push the envelope. What's trendy? What's really shocking? What's going to get the attention of people? You know, they recreated that movie, The Craft, mm. in 2020. Really? They recreated the movie, and they invited real witches on the set, and they had the witches, before they would do a scene, to cast spells and then to invite the actresses to come into this circle with them while they were releasing spell words over the viewers and over the the scene. And oh they, they broadcast it and wrote articles like, isn't this amazing? We're getting real and raw with these real witches and people are playing it in their home and it's entertainment. And you know, Charlene, I always say the first part of entertainment 
is enter. Enter. So be careful what's entering your home. Absolutely. I didn't have that in my home, but it is definitely a shock factor that our generation is really gravitating towards. That is so shocking. I didn't know that. We're certainly going to make sure that people are aware of that. I understand, Jenny, that a lot of people are burning <clears throat> sage. What's your take on, on Christians even burning sage and what's that supposed to do? Burning sage is something that I did while I was practicing witchcraft. And when I got into a home with another witch that I lived with, the very first thing that we did as witches is we got bundles of sage from the new age store and we were burned sage to rid the house of evil. And so we would go in the corners and rid the house of evil. And I never thought in a million years that I would see Christians doing it. I thought it, it in my day, I thought this is just what witches do. This is what people in the occult world do. This is what people in the new age world do. And now um, there's so much mixture and it's passed down information that people don't know the origins. And it's really from, um, if we go all the way back, we can see that it is steeped in witchcraft where you're communicating with spirits, you're communicating with the dead, and you're trying to push these things back. But the only thing that will do that, the only thing that gets rid of evil is the spirit of our God, Amen. period. Amen. And so I personally don't practice that. I don't come in partnership with that. I don't recommend it for anybody. If you're trying to uh, clean your house and get some Lysol, um, and, and if you want the evil to go, Call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Anoint your house with some holy anointed oil that's been prayed over in the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. So, Jenny, what are some other red flags that people uh, should look for that something may actually be occultic or, or witchcraft? Well, we're seeing a, a rise of the, like I said earlier, healing crystals. Mm. Crystals that give you energy. And when I have conversations with Christians, their genuine question to me is, well, didn't God make this? So isn't it okay? And I just want to caution people that just because something is here and it is made, like for instance, uh, I can make drugs here. Yeah. Drugs are on the earth. That doesn't mean that I should be partaking Absolutely. in it and putting it in my body. Um, and so we need to be careful that we are going to the source. We're seeing healing crystals. We're seeing people wearing these third eye necklaces. We're seeing people that are um, channeling their energy and chakras mm -hmm. and um, people communicating with ancestors and getting their ancestors spirits to give them power. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about, I'm having conversations with Christians who are doing these things, wow. um, dabbling in things that the origins of the event, like the event that we have coming up this weekend, Halloween, dabbling in these origins where the origins, when you go back, you can't separate that it was steeped and done in witchcraft and the demonic realm. And so I would just caution people, just be mindful of what's coming into your home through movies, music, entertainment. Uh, you know, I went to the store that's a very popular store, and I even hate to say their name, I but it was Marshalls. Up. Marshalls. And I was just blown away that Marshalls had actual witchcraft books. Like, oh, you can come in here and you can do a spell, and then you can get this sage, and you can get these healing. It was like a whole kit. And they're selling it like it's a holiday kit yep. that you would buy someone. And so it's really starting to be very mainstream and i just feel like the church needs to be aware that we need to stay away from all things the bible says to stay away from those things of darkness but rather expose them not to partake in them and what's your advice to to people who christians perhaps um and, and others who have dabbled in these sorts of things but really didn't understand the real danger uh, involved with those things what what's your advice to them what should they do yeah, I would absolutely say, have a conversation with the Lord. Always go into the Lord and, and saying, Father, I'm just asking you to cleanse me, wash me clean. God, I, I don't know if what I dabbled in, what, if that was okay or not, but I just want to make sure, God, that I'm right with you. And I ask you to rid me of any connection to anything in the demonic realm, the occult realm, or new age practices. God, I want to follow your truth. And so just... 
having that conversation with the Lord and then purposing in your heart that you are going to ask the Holy Spirit for guidance everywhere that you go. We are getting a lot through our eye gate. We're getting a lot through our ears, what we hear, what we see all the time, asking the Lord, God, I need your protection today. I want to know the truth. And then if you have dabbled in things like I, I have had to do this, I have dabbled in things, not dabble. I was fully immersed mm. in them. I've had to renounce, say, I renounce all occult practices. I renounce the craft. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce all the perversion that came with it. And I cling to the Lord. The Lord is my master. He's the Lord of my life. And I declare this day that I only serve and follow Jesus. And you make those declarations and the Bible says you can decree a thing and it will be established so that his light will shine on your ways. And so I absolutely would go to the Lord, repent for knowingly or unknowingly participating in something that would be considered witchcraft. Would you take a moment, Jenny, and just pray for those who will see this interview and lead them in a prayer like that. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you and we ask you, Lord, that your hand would continuously rest on us. Father, we repent right now by the name of Jesus Christ for any involvement in the occult and new age in witchcraft practices. Father, we just repent right now. God, we're asking that you would wash us clean. Father, we say, come and take over. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us in all truth. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we break every bit of witchcraft, every spell, every hex, every vex, every incantation, all sorcery, all magic, all voodoo. It is broken now by the precious blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that our bloodline is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And in Jesus' name, we will walk in your truth from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Yes. Switch and save $652. It's okay. There's enough for everyone. Hi, sorry, you guys. I am kind of... You know, I'm intern, like I said earlier, so, but I don't, I know I'm kind of a little off, but I don't care. I need to release this video. Um, be careful, you guys. I've been doing this, like, I'm very cautious who comes in my house. Very cautious. And I have my tone. That's my atmosphere. That's my, my tone that I set in my house. I play me spiritual music, like, right now I'm at my internship. When these students come in here. I have this song playing, it's spiritual inter instrumental songs, and it's ha and has scriptures playing. I, I set this atmosphere, I set the pace. So I have that playing in my house on low. And sometimes I have Bible scriptures being said on low. And I do have people that have came in my house. Um, I hardly have company, but when I do, I have people like, Kenny, can you turn this off? Can we play some other music and get angry? And I don't turn it for them and next you know, a little, drama kind of popped off like then find out this person playing with other stuff anyway so set your tone don't let nobody um deter you from staying focused and 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 delay your blessings and or distract you from the word of god um like my pastor told me and my elder if you're not ministering to to them then how can two walk together unless they agree or God said, be equally yoked. So if you're not ministering your bag, your, your, your Bible's not in your bag and you're ministering to these people who don't believe what you believe in or walk the way you walk, then you're not supposed to be hanging out hot, hot with them. And I'm telling you this for, to, for you can avoid the things that I avoided, some of the drama, some of the chaos or delays or disruptions to my path, what God had me on my assignment for. So as this is not being religious. This is not being holier than thou. You can minister with them. You can fellowship with them because it's a ministry. Okay. Love you guys. Take care. I'm at school. That's an announcement.